Does it bother you to constantly be compared with Olga Corbett? I'm not Olga Corbett, I'm Nadia Kumanich. <laughs> The 70s and 80s were a golden age for European gymnastics, with athletes pushing the boundaries of human ability. But one young woman stole the spotlight like no other. You know, this is the Olympics. I cannot make a mistake. This is one shot. <laughs> ten she's got. She's got another ten. At just 14, Nadia Comaneci from Romania stunned the world by scoring a perfect ten, a feat once deemed impossible. This wasn't just a victory. It was a seismic shift in the sport. While Nadia's legend is well known, the stories about her remarkable journey and the secrets behind her iconic feat have remained hidden until now. Nadia Comaneci's Journey to Gymnastic Greatness Nadia came into the world on November 12, 1961, in the Carpathian town of Onesti, which is located in Romania. As she grew up, Nadia wasn't like most children. She was bursting with energy, a little whirlwind of giggles and leaps, always bouncing off the walls like a joyful rubber ball. Her parents, seeing just how active she could be, knew she needed a way to channel her boundless spirit. So they decided to try something new, something that they hoped would tire her out a bit, gymnastics. Little did they know, they were setting their daughter on a path that would change her life forever. The moment Nadia stepped into the gym, everything clicked. It wasn't just about burning off steam anymore. It was like the whole world opened up for her. She loved everything about it. The way her body could fly through the air, the feeling of pushing her limits, the thrill of mastering a new move. Practice wasn't just a chore, it was an adventure. Soon it wasn't about tiring her out anymore, it was about nurturing a passion that had ignited within her. But fate had even bigger plans for little Nadia. At the tender age of six, her talent caught the eye of Bella Caroli. Bella, a renowned gymnastics coach, was on the lookout for promising young gymnasts he could train from a young age. He spotted Nadia and her friend doing cartwheels in a schoolyard, and in that moment, he saw a raw talent that couldn't be ignored. Recognizing her potential, Bella extended an invitation for her to join his experimental gymnastics school where he sought to nurture young talents into skilled gymnasts. At the age of seven in 1968, Nadia embarked on her gymnastics journey under the tutelage of Bela. She became one of the inaugural students at the gymnastics school, founded by Bela and his wife, Marta, right in her hometown of Onesti. Nadia's daily routine involved rigorous training, lasting three hours each day, all under the watchful guidance of Bela. Thankfully, the gymnastics school was conveniently situated near Nadia's house, eliminating the need for lengthy commutes. Despite initial struggles in her early amateur competitions, where falls were frequent, Bella maintained faith in Nadia. Through persistent training, her skills improved dramatically, transforming her falls into graceful and effortless landings. In 1970, at the age of nine, Nadia stepped onto the competitive stage as a proud member of her hometown team. Remarkably, she clinched the title of the youngest gymnast ever to win the Romanian Nationals. The following year, in 1971, marked her debut on the international scene with a dual junior meet against Yugoslavia, where she not only secured her first all-around title, but also contributed to the team's gold victory. Over the next years, she continued to shine in national contests within Romania and engaged in dual meets with countries like Hungary, Italy, and Poland. Nadia Comaneci's Rise to Olympic Glory At the tender age of 11 in 1973, Nadia achieved a remarkable feat at the Junior Friendship Tournament, an international meet for junior gymnasts. She not only secured the all-around gold, but also claimed victory in the vault and uneven bars categories showcasing her prowess on the global gymnastics stage. In 1975, at the tender age of 13, Nadia burst onto the international gymnastics scene with a performance that left the world speechless. At the European Championships in Ski in Norway, she nearly swept the floor, winning gold medals in every event except the floor exercise, where she took a respectable second place. This was just the beginning of Nadia's meteoric rise. 
She continued to rack up wins that year, claiming the all-around title at the Champions All competition and sweeping the all-around vault beam and bars at the Romanian National Championships. Nadia's talent was undeniable, but her success wasn't without challenges. One of her biggest rivals was the accomplished Soviet gymnast Nelly Kim. Nelly was older and more experienced than Nadia, and she had already won multiple Olympic and World Championship titles. But Nadia was fearless and determined. She pushed herself to the limit, constantly innovating and refining her skills. The rivalry between Nadia and Nelly became one of the most captivating stories in gymnastics history. The two gymnasts battled it out for gold medals at major competitions throughout the late 1970s, pushing each other to ever greater heights. In March 1976, a 14-year-old Nadia Comaneci crossed the Atlantic to compete in the first-ever American Cup at Madison Square Garden in New York City. This was Nadia's big break onto the American stage, and she didn't disappoint. At the American Cup, Nadia also met a young American gymnast named Bart Connor. While Bart remembered the encounter fondly, Nadia herself wouldn't recall it until years later. But this chance meeting would blossom into a beautiful friendship and, eventually, a lifelong love story. Just a few months later, Nadia's name would be forever etched in the annals of Olympic history. The stage was set for the 1976 Summer Olympics in Montreal, Canada, and Nadia was ready to show the world what she was truly capable of. On July 18, 1976, the world watched in awe as a 14-year-old Nadia took to the uneven bars at the Montreal Olympics. Her performance was breathtaking. When Nadia dismounted from the bars, the judges knew they had witnessed something extraordinary. They awarded her a perfect score of 10. But there was a problem. The scoreboard wasn't designed to display such a high score. The technology simply couldn't handle Nadia's brilliance. Instead of the expected 10, the scoreboard flashed just one. The crowd erupted in confusion, then cheers, as they realized what had happened. Nadia had become the first gymnast in Olympic history to score a perfect 10. News of Nadia's perfect 10 spread like wildfire. It wasn't just about a score, it was a moment that redefined the possibilities of gymnastics. Nadia became an overnight sensation, her name forever linked to the Montreal Olympics and the image of her soaring through the air. The rest of the competition was a blur of brilliance for Nadia. She went on to win three gold medals, a silver medal, and a bronze medal. From perfect tens to political turmoil. Nadia's performance at the Montreal Olympics wasn't just a personal triumph. It was a game changer for the whole world of gymnastics. It was like she'd flung open the doors to a new era of what was possible on the floor, bars, and beam. At just 14 years old, she became the first Romanian gymnast to win the coveted all-around title, and her age set a record that still stands today. Back then, the rules were different. Gymnasts only needed to be 14 by the first day of the competition, allowing Nadia to compete at her young age. Today, however, strict age eligibility requirements have been implemented, ensuring gymnasts must be at least 16 in the year of the Olympics. This means Nadia's record is practically unbreakable, but her impact went far beyond records. Nadia's perfect tens and graceful routines captivated audiences worldwide. Suddenly, everyone was talking about gymnastics. Nadia became a superstar, her face plastered on posters throughout Romania and her name buzzing on every TV screen. The BBC named her Overseas Sports Personality of the Year, and the Associated Press crowned her Female Athlete of the Year. Back home, her achievements were met with national pride and fanfare. The communist regime of Romania couldn't resist basking in her glow, showering her with accolades. The biggest honor came from the head honcho himself, the country's iron-fisted ruler Nicolae Ceausescu. He declared Nadia a hero of socialist labor, making her the youngest Romanian to receive such a prestigious title under his reign. It was a double-edged sword, a public celebration of her success, but also a way for the regime to claim her as their own propaganda poster child. While Nadia's perfect dazzling routines captivated the world at the 1976 Olympics, another element unexpectedly became intertwined with her legacy, a song called Nadia's Theme. This instrumental piece, originally titled Cotton's Dream, 
wasn't even written for Nadia. It was part of the soundtrack for the 1971 film Bless the Beasts and Children, and later became the theme music for the American soap opera The Young and the Restless. But then, magic happened. In 1976, American sportscaster Robert Riger used Cotton's Dream to accompany slow-motion montages of Nadia's performance on ABC's Wide World of Sports. The pairing was perfect. The soaring melody and Nadia's graceful movement seemed to dance in perfect harmony. The song resonated with audiences, climbing the charts to become a top 10 hit in the fall of 1976. Recognizing the song's association with Nadia's meteoric rise, composers Barry DeVorzon and Perry Botkin Jr. made the official switch. Cotton's dream became Nadia's theme. It was a fitting tribute to the 14-year-old who had rewritten the gymnastics rulebook and captured the hearts of millions. Interestingly, Nadia herself never actually performed to Nadia's theme. Her floor exercise music was a different melody altogether. In 1977, Nadia returned to the European Championships, ready to defend her all-around title and continue her reign as the Queen of Gymnastics. She once again delivered stunning performances, captivating audiences with her grace and skill. However, amidst her triumph, controversy erupted, casting a shadow over the competition. During the event finals, questions were raised about the scoring of some routines. Some judges felt discrepancies and inconsistencies in the way points were awarded, raising concerns about fairness and accuracy. This drew the attention of the Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu, who was known for his strict control and intolerance for dissent. Furious at the perceived injustice towards his country's gymnasts, Ceausescu made a drastic decision. He ordered the entire Romanian team, including Nadia, to pack their bags and leave the competition immediately. This shocking move stunned the crowd and sparked international outrage. Nadia's Darkest Hour Nadia's journey after her 1976 Olympic triumph was anything but smooth. The pressure of fame, the constant scrutiny of the Romanian regime, and the physical demands of her sport took a toll on the young gymnast. Following the controversial 1977 European Championships, Nadia was forced to train away from her usual coach and friends. Nadia found herself isolated and alone in Bucharest. This, coupled with the physical and emotional changes she was experiencing as she grew older, took a toll on her both physically and mentally. Her gymnastic skills suffered, and she struggled with a profound sense of unhappiness. Adding to the pressure, Nadia lived under the constant scrutiny of the Securitate, Romania's secret police. Their watchful eyes and intrusive presence created a claustrophobic atmosphere, further chipping away at her sense of freedom and privacy. In August 1978, while staying at the August Sports Hotel in Bucharest, this pressure reached a breaking point. Stopped by an official while simply trying to do laundry, Nadia felt trapped and overwhelmed. In a moment of despair, she returned to her room and consumed a cup of laundry detergent. Due to this incident, she was hospitalized for two days. Amidst all these, words circulated about the true cost of this success. Nadia's story is often remembered for its dazzling triumphs, the perfect tens, the Olympic glory, and the transformation of gymnastics. But behind the shine there lurked a darker side, a web of secrecy and control orchestrated by the Romanian regime. As early as 1975 whispers started about the level of monitoring she was under. The Securitate, Romania's secret police, had infiltrated her training center in Onesti, planting informants among coaches and staff. These watchers reported on Nadia's every move, sending regular handwritten updates back to the government. Nobody seemed safe from their shadow, not even Nadia's closest confidants. Even Bella Caroli, Nadia's legendary coach, couldn't escape the pervasive surveillance. Known by his codename Katona, Bella himself became an informant, providing reports on his coaching methods and the progress of his gymnasts. Geza Pozar, Nadia's choreographer, not only designed her dazzling floor routines, but also acted as a hidden observer. Unlike Bela, Pozar's reports focused on raising concerns about Bela's harsh training methods and the toll they were taking on the young gymnasts. He described cruel taunts, humiliating punishments, and even physical abuse. Slaps, 
fear, and a constant struggle to meet impossible standards. Sadly, Posar's pleas fell on deaf ears. As long as Bella delivered medals for Romania, the government chose to turn a blind eye to his methods. They prioritized national pride over the well-being of the young athletes in his care. Bella's training sessions were infamous for their grueling intensity. Eight hours a day, six days a week, Nadia and her teammates pushed their bodies to the limit under the watchful eye of their coach. Weight became an obsession, with Bela monitoring each girl meticulously and resorting to food deprivation for those he deemed too heavy. The psychological and physical consequences were devastating, with bulimia becoming a rampant issue within the team. Before we continue with the rest of the video, let's take a look at today's subscribers pick. Nadia Comaneci confirms what we knew all along. The path to athletic glory is often paved with unseen hardships. The legendary gymnast trained under an iron fist, pushed to the limit in a regimented system that prioritized medals over well-being. Her every move was monitored, her voice stifled. Sound familiar? Even today, whispers of abuse, manipulation, and pressure plague the world of elite athletics. Young athletes, often far from home and family, carry burdens invisible to the cheering crowds. So, as we celebrate the next Simone Biles or Gabby Douglas, let's not forget the unseen battles they might be fighting. Have you witnessed or heard stories of unseen struggles faced by athletes? How can we, as fans and supporters, create a system that prioritizes athlete well-being alongside athletic achievement? Let's talk about this. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Defying Limits Again Nadia's journey after her suicide attempt in 1978 was a roller coaster of highs and lows, marked by both stunning triumphs and unexpected setbacks. At the 1978 World Championships in Strasbourg, she had grown taller and heavier since Montreal, but her determination to reclaim her dominance remained. Despite a fall from the uneven bars, Nadia finished fourth in the all-around, behind three Soviet gymnasts. However, she proved her resilience by winning gold on the balance beam and silver on the vault. After the World Championships, Nadia was allowed to return to Deva, the training center run by Bella Caroli. Despite the harsh training regime, she persevered and continued to excel. In 1979, Nadia etched her name in history by becoming the first gymnast ever, male or female, to win three consecutive European all-around titles. This feat cemented her place as a legend of the sport. Later that year, Nadia traveled to the World Championships in Fort Worth, Texas. She dominated the compulsory rounds, leading the field in the all-around competition. Shortly before the optional rounds of the team competition, Nadia sustained a cut on her wrist from her metal grip buckle. This seemingly minor injury developed into a serious case of blood poisoning, forcing her into hospitalization. Despite doctors' orders to rest, Nadia's determination to contribute to her team's success was unwavering. Against medical advice, she left the hospital and competed on the balance beam, delivering a stunning performance that scored a 9.95. Nadia's heroic effort helped Romania win its first ever team gold medal. However, her selfless act took a toll on her health. She spent several days recovering in the hospital, undergoing surgery for the infected wound, the unforgettable American tour, and defection drama. The 9080 Moscow Olympics were unlike any other for Nadia Comaneci. Amidst the backdrop of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and a U.S.-led boycott, Nadia and her Romanian team walked into the lion's den, the USSR's home turf. Despite the political tensions, Nadia shone. She soared to victory, claiming two gold medals and two silver medals. However, these wins weren't without controversy. The scoring in both the all-around and floor exercise competitions drew protests from Nadia's coach, Bella Caroli. His complaints, captured live on television, caused a stir. In Nadia's own words, this outburst triggered anger from the Romanian government. They felt Bela had publicly embarrassed them, and his life became increasingly difficult. The incident underscored the complex power dynamics at play, with Nadia caught in the middle. Life became increasingly difficult for Bella after that with his relationship with the authorities strained. 
In 1981, a new chapter unfolded in Nadia's story. The Romanian Gymnastics Federation contacted her with an exciting opportunity. She was chosen to participate in a special tour of the United States called Nadia 81. This wouldn't be just any tour. It was a high-profile event with Nadia as the star attraction. Her coaches, the ever-present Bela and Marta Caroli, would lead the group. The tour promised a chance for Nadia to experience a different world, far from the watchful eyes of the Romanian regime. And for Nadia, it held another intriguing possibility. A reunion with a young American gymnast she'd crossed paths with before. Yes, Bart Connor, the same boy she met briefly at the 1976 Olympics, would be sharing the tour bus with her team. Their first encounters had been fleeting, but those glimpses had left a spark. As Nadia later recalled, Connor was cute. He bounced around the bus talking to everyone. He was incredibly friendly and fun. Just as Nadia's American tour was drawing to a close, a shocking event changed the course of her life. On the very last day, her coaches, Bela and Marta Caroli, along with the Romanian team choreographer Geza Pozer, made a dramatic decision. They defected. Before their defection, Bela had subtly hinted at his intentions, even asking Nadia indirectly if she wanted to join them. At the time, Nadia, still young and yearning for home, had no desire to leave Romania. She assured her coach that her heart was set on returning to her familiar life. Little did Nadia know, however, that her refusal to defect would have drastic consequences. The Romanian authorities, viewing her as a national treasure and potential flight risk, clamped down on her freedom. Movement within the country was restricted, and the once boundless world beyond its borders became all but inaccessible. Her movements and activities became even more closely monitored, effectively turning her into a prisoner within her own country. In that same year, Nadia took to the stage for what would be her final major competition, the World University Games held in her hometown of Bucharest. However, what should have been a triumphant farewell was marred by controversy that cast a shadow over her victory. The World University Games, meant for athletes enrolled in higher education, raised eyebrows from the start. Romania, despite having only Nadia as a competitor eligible by age, somehow managed to win gold. This feat was made possible by what many perceived as blatant manipulation of the scoring system. While Nadia delivered competent routines, they weren't her usual dazzling displays. Yet she received near-perfect scores, sweeping the all-around, vault, bars, and floor exercise categories. Even seasoned journalists familiar with Nadia's peak performances expressed dismay at these inflated scores, calling it disheartening to witness such obvious favoritism. End of an era. For several years after the Nadia 81 Inches tour, silence descended upon Nadia's story. The Romanian government, still fearing defection, kept a tight grip on her movements. Travel abroad, once a regular perk of her celebrity, became a distant dream. She was confined within the borders of Romania, allowed only a few carefully monitored trips to Moscow and Cuba. While the world wondered about her fate, Nadia found purpose in a smaller arena. She stepped onto the other side of the podium, becoming a coach for young gymnasts. From all accounts, she was a dedicated and passionate mentor, earning the respect and affection of her trainees. These quiet years saw her nurturing the next generation of talent, sharing the knowledge and skills that had propelled her to Olympic glory. The 1984 Los Angeles Olympics presented a strange twist for Nadia. While many communist nations boycotted the Games in retaliation for the United States-led boycott of Moscow in 1980, Romania surprisingly chose to participate. This fueled speculation, with Nadia later suggesting in her memoir that Romania may have struck a deal with the United States to prevent any defections. However, Nadia's experience in Los Angeles was far from the usual Olympic fanfare. Instead of competing, she served as an observer, a bittersweet role that kept her away from the competitive arena, but offered a chance to reconnect with her former coach, Bella Caroli. Bela, now a United States citizen, had defected with his wife Marta just three years prior, leaving Nadia behind in Romania. In Los Angeles, he was proudly coaching the rising American star, Mary Lou Retton. 
Watching her win five medals, including a gold, must have been a complex experience for Nadia, a mix of pride for her old mentor and a pang of loss for the life she could have had if she followed him. But reuniting with Bella wasn't easy. The Romanian delegation, wary of another defection, kept a close eye on Nadia, effectively preventing any meaningful contact between her and her former coach. That same year, Nadia finally drew the curtain on her competitive career. Her retirement was marked by a grand event, a farewell to Nadia, that reverberated beyond the Iron Curtain. Dignitaries and reporters from across the globe descended upon Romania to witness this significant moment. It was a bittersweet celebration, acknowledging her achievements while recognizing the end of an era. Love, loss, and legacy. Nadia's life immediately after retirement was far from the fairy tale many imagined. The sparkle of Olympic glory faded, replaced by a harsh reality of isolation and control. Nadia Comaneci confirms what we knew all along, and she later wrote in her memoir, Life took on a new bleakness. The financial freedom she had once known, supplementing her family's income, vanished. When my gymnastics career was over, Nadia reflected, there was no longer any need to keep me happy. She became, in her own words, a marionette, expected to obey like she had her entire life. Nadia's spirit, however, refused to be completely subdued. On a cold November night in 1989, just weeks before the Romanian Revolution, she made a daring decision. She joined a group of other Romanians determined to escape the oppressive regime. Guided by Constantin Panayi, a Romanian defector who would later become an American citizen, they embarked on a treacherous journey. Walking mostly at night, hiding from patrols, they crossed Hungary and Austria on foot. Finally, after days of danger, they reached a plane waiting to take them to the United States, to freedom. Nadia's escape from Romania sparked controversy. Many saw her as a home wrecker as she had accepted help from the married Constantine Panait with four children. In her memoir, Nadia painted a different picture. She described being trapped under Panait's control and subjected to mistreatment and a life far from the freedom she had envisioned. With the help of another Romanian immigrant, Alexander Stefu, Nadia finally broke free from Panait's grip. Finding a warm welcome in the Stefu family, she began rebuilding her life. She landed a modeling contract with Jockey, showcasing a new side of her talent and beauty. Tragically, fate dealt another blow when Stefu died in a car accident. Grief threatened to engulf Nadia, but she found solace in an unexpected connection. Former Olympic gymnast Bart Connor, with whom she had shared brief encounters years ago, reached out and invited her to Oklahoma. In 1991, Nadia finally decided to move to Oklahoma. Bart had started a gymnastics school, and she wanted to lend a hand. She found a welcoming home with the family of Paul Ziert, who eventually became her manager. For a while, Nadia and Bart were just friends, sharing their passion for gymnastics and building a strong bond. It took four years for their friendship to blossom into something deeper, and they finally got engaged. Their 1996 wedding was a unique homecoming for Nadia. After years of living under the watchful eye of the Romanian regime, she returned to a completely different country. The communist regime had fallen, and Romania was embracing a new capitalist era. The government, eager to reclaim its own Olympic star, welcomed Nadia back as a national hero. Their wedding ceremony, held in Bucharest, became a national event. Cameras broadcast the festivities live, allowing all of Romania to share in the couple's joyous celebration. After saying their vows, Nadia and Bart held their reception in a place that symbolized the transformation of their homeland, the former presidential palace. In 1997, Nadia and Bart's love story spilled onto the screen when they guest starred on the famous show Touched by an Angel. They showcased their talents with a brief floor exercise routine, reminding everyone of their graceful partnership on and off the mat. By 2001, Nadia officially became a naturalized United States citizen, solidifying her connection to the country that had welcomed her with open arms. While embracing her American identity, she also held on to her Romanian roots, choosing to maintain dual citizenship. In 2006, their love story took a beautiful turn with the birth of their son, Dylan. 
Becoming a mother added a new dimension to Nadia's life, filling it with the joys and challenges of parenthood. Six years later in 2012, Nadia stood tall as the featured speaker at the 50th annual Independence Day naturalization ceremony at Monticello. This was a monumental occasion, marking the first time an athlete was invited to address this gathering of new American citizens. Nadia's love for gymnastics wasn't just a burning flame in her youth, it's a fire that continues to illuminate her path even today. Far from retiring to a life of leisure, she remains actively engaged in the sport, spreading her passion and knowledge in a multitude of ways. In Oklahoma, Nadia and Bart have built their own haven for aspiring gymnasts. Their gym isn't just a training ground. It's a community where young athletes can learn from the best, soaking in the wisdom of Olympic champions. Nadia's presence itself is an inspiration, a living embodiment of dedication and excellence. But her reach extends far beyond the walls of her own gym. Through Perfect 10 Productions, a company she co-founded with Bart, Nadia continues to share her love for the sport with the world. Their TV productions bring the magic of gymnastics to living rooms, keeping the sport alive in the hearts of fans and inspiring future generations. Nadia's dedication to her homeland is equally inspiring. She remains an ardent supporter of Romania's gymnastics program, offering not just financial aid, but also her invaluable personal support. Through her initiatives, Romanian gymnasts have the chance to train in the United States, gaining exposure to different training methods and cultures. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.